Good evening and welcome to this service of light for the third Sunday of Advent. I invite you to take a moment, take a deep breath, uh, settle yourself into the now. Light and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night. Darkness is not dark to you, O Lord, but the night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Let us pray. Almighty God, Give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility. And in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal. Through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vasper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times be praised by happy voices. O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. That part of the Psalter for this evening is Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping carrying the seed will come and give with joy, shouldering their sheaves. A reading from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garment of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. 
as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Stir up your power and with great might come among us. So begins the collect for this third Sunday of Advent. Pondering this collect uh, asks of us a level of truth telling and our vulnerability that might not be risk outside of an attempt at humor within the context of a sermon or lectionary study group. It's best to be careful of that which we pray. Do we, do I, really want God to stir up God's power? It's easier, it's more convenient when we feel God not getting too involved in our lives. That, of course, is an absurd idea. My being alive demonstrates God's commitment to my being. But what can be uncomfortable about God's power swirling in our midst is the growing awareness that God desires something of us. God hopes, and I do not use hope without a great deal of consideration. God hopes that we will get roused. By praying such, we acknowledge the power of God we note God's might. However, we also admit our own inability to live the life for which we were made and to which we are invited in and through Christ. Listen again, please, to Isaiah's words. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. In Scripture, to be anointed is to be set aside for a special vocation, to be given a responsibility by God. In his usual poetic way, vivid in its imagery, Isaiah paints his understanding of that to which he has been called. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. As I reflect on these words, I am reminded of the many times that I have been the recipient of such efforts by another person, weighed down, fractured, or grieving, but by someone making themselves available to me, I moved to being light, whole, and joyful. Advent has a great deal to do with waiting. And the quality of Advent has to do with how well we wait. Advent asks much more from us than passive expectation. It's a waiting in such a way that we roll up our sleeves and work and work at making our deepest longings tangibly real. By doing so, we live out our own anointing. We need to pray. We need to pray that God will stir up God's power and entice us along to achieve God's dream. Listen, please, to one last passage from Isaiah, 
as he describes that for which we wait. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The Song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I invite you, please, during the silences, uh, to offer your own prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. As witnesses to your light and truth, we come to you in prayer, O Lord. Infuse the heart of your church with your spirit and focus it on your mission. Renew your people and their leaders so that they serve your purpose. Remind us continually whose we are. Turn the hearts and actions of all the world's leaders to justice and peace. We pray for our president, our governor, the Congress, and courts of this land. Open our eyes to what is going on around us. Open our hearts to our brothers and sisters throughout the world. Move us to open our hands in love when they are in need and to stand up for them when they are oppressed. We pray for those suffering from natural disasters, from unjust economies, from hunger and want. We know people around us who are suffering from anxiety, scarcity, illness, and loneliness. Some of them we know, and most are unknown to us. We ask that you assure them of your presence and sustain them with your grace. We pray for those we know by name. Our hearts break when someone whom we love dies. 
Today we mourn for those recently departed. May we be a comfort as we walk with their loved ones. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty, everlasting God, let our prayer in your sight be as incense, the lifting up of our hands as the evening sacrifice. Give us grace to behold you present in your word and sacraments and to recognize you in the lives of those around us. Stir up in us the flame of that love which burned in the heart of your son as he bore his passion and let it burn in us to eternal life and to the ages to ages. Amen. May almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify us with the light of his blessing and set us free from all sin. May he whose second coming in power and great glory we await make us steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. May we who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer at his second advent, be rewarded with an ending life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good night, my friends.